Greetings, sailors. I think that it's long overdue that we got back to talking about docking here at Savvy Salt. The original dock line handling video got tons of views and also garnered me a lot of feedback. Unfortunately, one of the things that I heard a lot is that it was simply too much material crammed into too long of a video. I tend to agree, and going forward, I'm gonna try and keep these docking videos shorter and sweeter. To that end, let's jump right into this dock line handling addendum. This is three more techniques that I think are important for dock line handlers. Okay, so the first technique I wanna talk about today is what I like to call the combat cleat. The combat cleat is simply the easiest way that I know to make a line to a cleat that's secure enough for docking purposes. Now I know I went into all kinds of detail in the last video about the finer points of cleat hitches, but sometimes when you're docking, it's simply more important to get the line made to the cleat quickly than it is to tie the perfect cleat hitch. The combat cleat is simply taking a dock line, wrapping it twice around the cleat, and then holding onto the bitter end of the line until your skipper tells you you can let go. A lot of times people have questioned whether a combat cleat is strong enough to hold a boat for docking purposes, but I've used it on boats up to 55 feet, and as you can see here, it's holding this 34 footer just fine. Another advantage of the combat cleat is that you can teach it to someone who's never handled the dock line in their life in under two minutes. Another nice thing about the combat cleat is it keeps your fingers clear of the cleat hitch. The captain is going to be very hesitant to load up the, the line and the cleat hitch with 30,000 pounds of boat when your fingers are down there and he can't see if they're clear and safe. So the second technique I want to emphasize today is making sure that you keep slack out of the dock line when you're handling it as the skipper is bringing the boat to the dock. If you're handling a dock line that's supposed to secure the boat to a dock, your job isn't over once you've got that line made to the cleat. It's important that you keep tending that line and don't allow slack to work into that line while the skipper is putting the boat in the final position at the dock that they want. If you do let slack work into the line, the skipper has to deal with all that slack, where it's, which is so much easier for you as a dock line handler to deal with. I feel like the videos are going to cover this pretty clearly, so I'm just going to show a few keeping slack out of a dock line as the boat's pulling up to the dock, but just be aware that this is something that really helps the skipper out when you're bringing a boat to a dock. Fender's out. That's fine. Wait. Take slack out. There you go. All right, now block it off. Take slack out. There you go. All right, now block it off. So the third thing that I want to talk about is kind of tricky. This is what I like to call an upside down cleat. Let me just show you. What do you think is wrong with this cleat? It's kind of a trick question because there's nothing wrong with it. Except that in the larger scheme of things, it's totally upside down. The problem is that the end of this line that's meant to be loaded up is on the top of the cleat, whereas the, the bitter end of the line is secured to the bottom. If somebody uses this cleat the way that it's set up to secure the boat to the dock, this cleat is going to bind up really hard and be very difficult to untie. The upside down cleat is simply something to keep an eye out for when you're getting the lines ready to bring a boat to the dock. Thank you for watching and I'll see you out there.